All right, let's go over these U try problems. So this very first one, sine theta times cotangent theta equals cosine theta, is actually pretty straightforward because remember cotangent theta is um, cosine over sine. So I can rewrite cotangent theta as cosine theta over sine theta. And then you'll see how that sine theta is going to cancel out the sine theta in the denominator. So right here. And then we're left with cosine theta equals cosine theta. And we prove that identity. Because remember, to prove it, we just need both sides to match. This next one, 1 minus secant of negative theta equals 1 minus secant theta. Remember, again, it doesn't always mean you have to you know, keep the left side the same. You can manipulate whichever side you'd like. So like in the first example, or the first you try, I actually played around with sine theta times cotangent theta. Um, so again, whatever side you're more comfortable with. And when I see that negative theta, I immediately think about those negative angle identities. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna think, okay, well, I don't have a negative angle identity for secant, but I do have a negative angle identity for cosine. And remember, cosine and secant are related. So remember, the cosine of negative theta is just plain old cosine theta. So that's just something to um, remember. So I'll star that. So I'm going to rewrite this secant theta, secant of negative theta as 1 over cosine theta because remember, secant theta is 1 over cosine theta. So these are the identities I'm working with here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and now start manipulating my expression. So instead of one minus secant of negative theta, I'm gonna do one minus one over cosine of negative theta. And I'm not gonna mess with this right side because I decided I'm gonna leave it and try to make that left side match the right side. So I'm gonna leave that as one minus secant theta. All right, and then I'll remember, hey, cosine of negative theta is the same as plain old cosine theta. Because if you went back to your unit circle, if I went to pi over six, and then it's reflection on into the fourth quadrant, that x value doesn't change. So that cosine of negative theta is the same as plain old cosine of theta. And then, hey, what do you know? One over cosine theta, that's once again secant theta. So one minus secant theta equals one minus secant theta. Cool, so there's that identity. Last two of these u tries, we're going to rewrite the expressions now in terms of sine. So make sure you saw that different from the notes where we had cosine. Now we're going to rewrite it in terms of sine. And remember, always simplify as much as you can. So that's going to come into play with this first one here. Cosine squared theta over 1 minus sine theta, right? So where have I seen a relationship between cosine squared theta and sine theta? Well, remember that Pythagorean identity? cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta equals 1. We can manipulate this now to solve for cosine squared theta because I want to get rid of that cosine squared and I want to put in some sine equivalent. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract that sine squared theta to both sides. And we'll see that cosine squared theta is the same as 1 minus sine squared theta. So let me go ahead and rewrite the problem, but now instead of having cosine squared theta, I'm going to put in 1 minus sine squared theta. All right, and now remember, imagine the sine squared theta, the sine theta as a variable, as x. So don't be confused and don't try to do some illegal math here. So think back to when we talked about rational expressions. Think back to when we did factoring and simplifying these things. Right? So I'm going to do this in a different color just so you see. So just remember something like this. When, it, when we had something like 1 minus x squared over 1 minus x, how do we simplify that? Well, this is a difference of two squareds. That's 1 minus x times 1 plus x over 1 minus x, right? And then now we can cancel out our factors because remember, we can't cancel out terms, so we can't mess with that 1 minus x squared over 1 minus x, but I can now cancel out the factors because now I'm multiplying and I'm left with one plus x. This is the same situation we see here going on with sine. So what we can do is we can factor one minus sine squared theta because that's still a difference of two squares. Because one squared is one, sine um, theta times sine theta is sine squared theta because again, that's just multiplying two sines together. So we have one minus sine theta over, or times one plus sine theta as the, that the factors for that difference of two squares. And then we can put that over this 
1 minus sine theta. And I couldn't simplify before, but now I can because now I have factors. I have a complete group. This 1 minus sine theta, 1 minus sine theta cancels out. And we're left with 1 plus sine theta. So that's what I was trying to say at the very beginning of this problem. If you can simplify even further, make sure you simplify all the way to the end. Even though this 1 minus sine squared theta over 1 minus sine theta is all in terms of sine, it can actually be simplified even further. So we always want to double check that. And here's where you can see that factoring. It's still sneaking back in here. So we want to be able to factor when we can. So I'm going to erase this note here. And let's look at the last one. Cotangent squared theta. Well, how is cotangent related to sine? Because if you go back and you're looking at your identities, and I'll scroll back on my notes here, wait, cotangent squared it has no sign, but hey, it actually has a relationship with cosecant, and cosecant is 1 over sine. So there's that connection. So we want to kind of put those two pieces together. So I'm going to write down the identities that I'm using here. So I scrolled up earlier and I saw, hey, cotangent squared theta plus 1 equals cosecant theta, and cosecant theta is equal to 1 over sine theta. And our goal is to have no cotangents, no cosines, nothing but just sine, right? So now let's think about how we can manipulate cotangent squared theta. Well, cotangent squared theta itself has no, oops, and I forgot that, cosecant squared, sorry about that, um, has no actual relationship with sine squared theta or sine by itself, right? But I can replace cotangent squared theta with some equivalent expression using cote cosecant. So what I can do here is I'm going to take this cotangent squared theta plus 1 equals cosecant squared theta, and I'm going to take away the 1 because I want to know what is another expression for cotangent squared theta. So cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta minus 1. And I can rewrite this now. Instead of cotangent squared theta, it's cosecant squared theta minus 1. Right? Sorry, it's all messy, but that's me rewriting the problem here. Why do I want that? Because I want sine, right? So cosecant is 1 over sine theta, so that's going to become 1 over sine squared theta minus 1. And now I can rack my brain and be like, oh, is there anything else I can do to just simplify this without adding in any other um, trig ratios or doing anything that wouldn't make sense mathematically? And no, right? I mean, you can make my, this negative 1, this 1 over sine squared theta, minus 1 turn into like sine squared theta over sine squared theta, but that doesn't simplify it any further, right? There's nothing I can actually factor out and cancel, so um, can rack my brain as much as I'd like, but this is really as simple as it gets. And that is it for the U-Try problems. So again, if you have any questions, definitely reach out and let me know.